Freedom. Anyone who lives in America or in other Western countries enjoys the blessing of freedom. And it's something for which we are so grateful to God. After so many millennia and centuries of living in dictatorial regimes, regimes that impeded our ability to do what we wanted to do and persecuted us in so many situations. And now we're living in a free country. We have freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and other freedoms that we cherish so much. But let us not make the mistake to look at freedom and the ability to vote freely as a automatic gain. What good is the right to vote if the candidates who are running for office are people who are in the spirit of a Stalin or a Hitler? The fact that you have a choice doesn't really mean anything because in order for freedom to be worth anything, it has to be based on principles and values. Freedom in and of itself is not a panacea. If it isn't based on eternal principles, and what are these eternal principles that are relevant not just to the Jewish people but to all of society? When God allowed Noah, Noah to survive the flood, in the aftermath of the flood, God gave Noah seven commandments. They're known in Hebrew as Sheva Mitzvot B'nai Noah, the seven commandments given to the children or descendants of Noah. These seven commandments are really seven categories of commandments that were reiterated at Mount Sinai and given to the Jewish people in their responsibility to spread these teachings to all of humankind. Every human being is bound by these seven commandments. Yes, the Jewish people were given 613, which are not incumbent upon every human being, but everyone has to follow these seven commandments, and they are the, the negation of idolatry, of blasphemy, of eating an animal without first killing it, in other words, being cruel to animals, theft, murder, sexual crimes, and establishing courts that will enforce these laws and legislate others to protect society and to make society a civilized place, a place that is inhabitable, not a place of chaos and anarchy. That is the foundation of freedom. If freedom is based on those principles and other related principles, then freedom is an incredible blessing. But if freedom is just the ability to do whatever we want, it's not a sense, it has no sense of responsibility, just license, then freedom is no better than tyranny. Oh, with one exception that if you have freedom, you could always bounce back and go back on the right track. But where do we get freedom from? We get it from the exodus from Egypt. At the time of the exodus from Egypt, the Jewish people were given the power to be free and to be free in a constructive and a positive way, not just a way that allows you to do whatever you want, but a freedom that is based on those principles. And that's why we're obligated to remember the exodus every single day and every single night. Because without remembering the exodus, without remembering what is the objective of freedom? When the Jews got out of Egypt, they were not liberated from servitude. They were liberated from one form of servitude. Instead of serving Pharaoh, they were now going to serve God on this mountain, as the Torah puts it. We have become subservient to the one God rather than subservient to a Pharaoh and the many different influences that take control of this world. And that's why we have to remember the Exodus because that's the ultimate model for true freedom, freedom that is based on accepting the yoke of the heavenly kingdom, freedom to serve God the way God wants us to serve him. And then our freedom 
is a cherished freedom, something that we can truly value. But the question could be asked, why do we have to remember the Exodus every day and every night? As we say in the Haggadah, the recitation of the Seder night, that Rabbi Loza ben Azariah said that he couldn't prevail over his colleagues, that you have to remember the Exodus every night until Ben Zoma came and he established this obligation based on a verse in the Torah where it says you have to remember the days that you left Egypt, all the days of your life. Why does the Torah say all the days of your life? To tell us not only during the day, but also at night. But why do we have to remember the Exodus twice in a 24-hour period? Wouldn't it be enough to do it once? And the answer is that night here means, it's a metaphor, when a person's spiritual life is dark, a person sees no spirituality, a person is empty, a person is vacuous, a person does not have any life in him or her, and they are therefore in a prison. They are confined to the st status of being inactive, inert. They're not capable of living their lives to the fullest. One would think that a person like that is forever bound by th those confining influences. So the Torah tells us, no, every night you can remember the Exodus and you must remember the Exodus. You must be able to get out of that rut. How do we do that? How do we get out of darkness? You open up a window when the sunlight the window is shut and the window is opaque. You're not going to have any light. You have to open up the window. How do we open up that window to allow the light of the Exodus shine in us? Well, there are three ways we do that. We do it through prayer. We do that through Torah study. And we do that through the observance of the mitzvot, of the commandments. That's the objective way of doing it, but it's not enough. We have to do it with kavana. Kavana is usually translated as focus, concentration, and there's a, another translation of the word kavana, which is windows. When Daniel prayed, it says he opened up the windows. The windows were open, and the, Hebrew, the Aramaic word is kavain, which is cognate to the word kavana, because a window allows the light to be focused and introduces itself into our homes, when a person has the objective power to open a window through Torah study, through mitzvah observance, through prayer, and adds to that the subjective kavana, the concentration, the feeling, the fervor, that opens up windows and allows the light to shine. And that's why every night, even when it's dark, we have the ability to open up a window and to bring in the light of freedom. Then the question is, then why do we have to remember the Exodus by day? Isn't it enough to remember the Exodus when you are in a state of darkness and you're anything but free? But if you're in the light, you are free already. And the answer to that is twofold. Number one, the Hebrew word for Egypt, as we all know, is Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim means confinement. Confinement doesn't necessarily mean a prison in which a person is tortured. Confinement means whenever you make a restricted life for yourself and you can't break out of your own self-imposed barriers, you live a life where there's no growth. You reach a certain plateau and you say, I'm satisfied with my spiritual progress. That means that you still are in Mitzrayim. Maybe you broke out of a lower form of Mitzrayim, but you're still in a Mitzrayim. You have to continually break out of whatever constraints, whatever limits your spirituality, because there's no limit to spirituality. God is infinite, and our relationship with God is also one that can go on forever. A second point is that even if we are in the light, even if our windows are open, we have all of the qualities that are necessary to enjoy freedom, and we're constantly growing on our own, going from level to level, we can still be in the dark, even if we're in the light, if we keep our own spirituality for ourselves. Breaking out of Mitzrayim means breaking out of your own 
identity that focuses on yourself. Even if your, your own identity is a very spiritual one and you're constantly breaking out of boundaries, going higher and higher, but if you're only focused on your own interests, own spiritual interests, and own material interests as well, then you still are in Mitzrayim. Remembering the Exodus by day means that even when you're in the light, even when the windows are open, you have to bring that light to others as well, enable them to go out of Mitzrayim. That is the formula for true freedom. When we are able to open up the windows at night and also during the day when it's light.